Hi everybody, this is Ann. Here's five more unique tools from the Pottery Studio Facebook group. First up is the silicone pastry mat. As you already know, clay will stick to any non-porous surface, making slab rolling difficult. This is my favorite to roll slabs out on. They're cheap, easy to store, stiff enough to avoid wrinkling, at the same time tough enough to avoid wear and tear, and they're non-textured. I cut and roll freshly pugged clay out on the pastry mat. As you can see, because the mat is flexible, the clay peels away easily. If I want to keep the slab flat for tiles, I cover the clay with a wear board or a wooden bat, then flip the entire sandwich so the clay remains flat. Then I peel the mat off the clay. Next, Di Wozni shares her use of the manicure cuticle sticks for sculpture work. Here is a sample of her amazing work. As you can see, the sticks have a pointed tip on one end and a beveled tip on the opposite side. She uses the pointed end for working in the small areas such as creating a nostril for a nose or creating a small highlight inside the pupil of an eye. If you need to add additional clay sections to your sculpture, the beveled edge can assist in smoothing out the clay and blending the clay together. Then you can burnish the two sections with the rounded edge of the pointed side of the stick. Number three is a sewing machine needle. Potters often need a tool for decorating that is thinner and smaller than a standard needle tool. The sewing machine needle is perfect for detail work. I mount it into the end of a cork with pliers, making it easy to grip and to keep track of. Here you can see why I like to use this tool. I can add highlights into the eyes of my tiny illustrations and even add small sgraffito lines where I need to. Cass Glickman offered the suggestion of the mirror. The mirror is her secret to throwing her beautiful pottery on the wheel. Cass says the mirror helps her remember her posture while throwing. It's important to position your body very close to the wheel head, keep your arms locked in place, and steady your hands so you can keep the clay centered and pull as even walls as possible. She said she also likes to see the progress of her clay from a side view. When a potter is pulling tall vessels, they only have a limited view of the top of the piece. It's easy to lose control of the clay at the bottom of the piece, resulting in collapse. With the mirror, the potter can keep an eye on any bulging that may occur. Finally, Cass added that from the mirror, she keeps an eye on the room, who might be behind her and, in her words, might sneak up and scare the bejesus out of her. Number five is the kitchen spatula suggested to me from sculpture artist Janice Rollins. There are many sizes and shapes of spatulas, all made from different materials. This particular spatula comes in handy for getting down into the narrow pot in order to sop up excess water and clay from the bottom. I can also use the spatula as a rib to smooth out the inside of a narrow pot that I can't get my hands down into. I use a bigger, stiffer spatula in my glaze bucket for mixing glazes. These are great to scrape materials from the bottom of the bucket and on the sides in order to get a good mixture essential for a successful dip. Finally, I use the stiffer spatula to sieve the mixture for an even more uniform glaze. Smooths it right out. Thank you to all the members of the Pottery Studio Facebook group for their suggestions. If you like our videos, please like, share, and subscribe. See you next time in the studio.